Magic Such a varied subject with a learning capacity of limitless boundaries. It is no wonder it's such a commonly used tool in fantasy media. You can start off with simple fire magic, like this. Fire! To advanced magic named the boots Kufsi Eman Sit Sit Ginyod Ima Yu to confusion magic like this. Shit yourself, Lancer. If you've been watching anime for a while, you've probably come across one of the many, 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 many battle school, probably horror anime. A generic premise beat to the ground so much you could build a cemetery called Where is the Next Season? At least in the past. Now we've transitioned into Isekai, and to be honest, I've been kind of missing these magic school battle shows. Which brings us to today's anime, Nanatsu no Maken ga Shihai Suru. Following the tradition of 7 Dragon Balls and 7 Chaos Emeralds, we now have 7 Spellblades that will destroy- <coughs> Rain over the world. Oh, oh god, So my we're head. Super Saiyan. <laughs> While I was looking forward to this show, I most certainly did not have expectations. It was a generic fantasy show produced by Jay-Z staff. Just look at their personal graveyard. So naturally, I was gonna watch it the way I study my exams. FFF. Fuck, finish, and forget. Keyword, was. Why am I so entertained? What is this? What the fuck is going on? Why is Super Saiyan growing white as grandma hair? Why is she giving birth to Mitty's evolved form? Why did he lose his dick? You could have donated your dick to Rudy, he needs a new one! Why am I so entertained? So at this point, I would usually give a brief rundown on the anime's premise, but this anime is... Uh, unique. I will give you two ways to interpret this premise. 1. The simple version. A group of friends meet at the beginning of a new school semester to learn magic. They face various classes, go through many troubles, and fights may occur, but they're always there for each other and doing their best with their school life. 2. The real version. A psychopathic fuck who somehow dug up a license to run a school tells an academy of teenagers, LOL, it's magic, don't die. 20% of our students die. Skill issue, don't die. But teenagers are teenagers. So... Asian Samurai Super Saiyan Girl does exhibitionism in fountain water. A whole ass fucking labyrinth under the school that's essentially another world. Attempted murder. Semen theft. Monster birth. No, like birth birth. That would get this anime banned if I move this animation some pixels lower. Demon Slayer. Animal abuse. Magician Red said fuck them kids. Kidnapping into brain surgery on a live human for research purposes. Palkia and Dialga are molding right now, I'm sure. It's not gay if the trap's dick falls off. That one Harry Potter toy. I have free candy in my van. Come in, kid. It's not gay if we're all traps. Also, magic that casually reverses gender. Roommate, my chest feels heavy. They are heavy. Random tournament arc. If dog is man's best friend, why can't troll be woman's best friend? If dog is man's best friend, why can't werewolf be woman's best friend? Wait, mana is stored in the uterus. <laughs> this is canon. <laughs> Uterus mana explosion. P may not be stored in the balls, but explosions could, maybe. Do you see how much shit is going on? One episode we're fighting magician's fried chicken, next episode apparently the laws of physics can be broken. The same episode, spoiler thing, what the fuck is this happens? Next episode, his roommate becomes a girl through magic. Motherfucking author woke up and threw a dart blindfolded at Wheel of Fortune to decide his next plot point. It's insane. It's like anything can happen, but somehow it feels so interconnected? At least compared to a lot of the other generic ass fantasy anime, while me listing things off like this makes it sound like a clusterfuck, it's a clusterfuck that stays clustered together. At its very core, the anime is a magic school anime that stays grounded with its sword styles and introduces new magic episode by episode, as if we're being introduced to the very laws of this world. Rather than a random bullshit go, as a last second excuse came up for some explanation for the bullshit that's happening, it feels more like, this just sounds like bullshit because we're novices that know nothing in this world. The same way Pokemon EVs or IVs sounded like a hacked thing when you were a kid, and alongside the mountains of new info we 
get, there's always some extra details that give more life to the overall world building, something I really appreciate. For example, the idea that the gender reversing magic is a thing that can just happen so there's a whole society supporting it. Or how Peter Girl gets bullied for being Pita is not just one arc but is consistently part of her character and her dream of changing the world's perspective towards monsters. Or the idea that we have a whole bunch of weird magic seemingly corresponding to the different seniors because, well, that's their research. This is a fucking academy and obviously in academia, you research catering to your fetishes. The show makes magic feel not like lol I do what I want, but instead somewhat of a science. Something to be researched, something to be understood, something to be developed. It makes for a convincing fantasy world with logic behind it, which I think could be a very important aspect to build an investing world that can suck you in. <laughs> suck you in. Surely if monster birth is a thing, monster unbirth is a thing. If I had to come up with a comparison, I don't think it's anywhere as good, but I think it's good in the same way Musoku Tensei is good. You have a fantasy world with different sword styles and magic power systems. You have an anime slowly introducing the world through the main gang's daily activities. You have the chill life until God decided chill was illegal in the fantasy dictionary and pulls a what the f Fuck the turning point on you. And despite it all, you still have the harem and cute anime girl tropes here and there. While the settings may be different, okay, maybe not that different now. Rudy is at every college student's worst nightmare. College. Do you think Oliver also wonders if he's gay? The base concept on how the world is presented is the same, and I guess I'm just a really big fan of this style. It feels like playing a school JRPG, helping NPCs going through 10 different side quests and learning something new in each one. It makes me look forward to the next new element to be introduced. The fuck's gonna happen next? Are we gonna get introduced to teleportation magic? Vampires? Gay vampires? NTR magic so it's not your fault you NTR'd someone? Holy magic to uncleanse the unholy things you've been doing to this scene? Ronald McChicken's brother? Donald McFuckchicken? Bending space and time so I can choose a universe where Chisataki and Bokita are canon? I don't know what's gonna happen, but that's the best part. Every week is an adventure to be seen, it's like pulling gacha as a gacha addict. It's exciting, it's exhilarating. Is this how gambling addicts feel? Speaking of similarities to Mushoku Tensei, again, not as insane as Mushoku Tensei, but holy fuck can the animation go hard. Someone in JC's staff decided to turn on their once in a year give a fuck mode and it shows. No CGI monsters and dragon in episode 1 was already a good indicator, but look at these dynamic shots and choreography in the fight against magic McFuck chicken. The way the magic and swordplay dances, movement as if each step blossoms is absolutely incredible. Even if the somewhat generic magic fantasy world doesn't catch your attention, if you're looking to turn off your brain cells and just see monkey do monkey punch monkey fight monkey slash, it's not a bad show to do just that. And in true Sun Wukong fashion, we even have Super Saiyan! Ah! Now usually for shows like this, it's at this point where I'd leave things off and call it a fun watch with great quality, but one particular episode, episode 6, felt like it flipped everything on its head and left me dumbfounded. I think it's pretty important to experience this firsthand, so spoiler warning. Jump to the timestamp on screen to skip past the spoiler part. The episode starts off with an incredible 2v1 fight, both showcasing the battle and magic experience a senior researching in this academy has, and how overpowered the legendary spellblades can be when utilized properly. I mean, Jesus Christ! Cutting through time and space to move faster than light? What the fuck is with spellblades and physics? One really just said, I'll kill you! I'm really feeling it, and proves a man's revolutionary theorem by really feeling it in this one simple trick. And another leaves Einstein and his E equals to MC square rolling, coping, seething, molding in his grave. He's molding! You're ruining his fabulous hairline! All of this is quite the standard stuff I've already talked about though. The coverage of magic usage and the incredible action. Yeah, I've sung my praises enough already. You'd think that this is the highlight of the episode considering the quality, but holy fuck, the second half kicks in. Our good issues MC, Olive Oil, is shown to be following a teacher into an eerie area. Then he uses a broken ass spell blade. Then he fucking tortures the teacher. Then he fucking murders the teacher. I repeat, who we've come to believe to be the generic Tanjiro ass, nice guy, harem MC guy, murders the teacher in cold blood. Now with the extremely questionable safety protocols of the entire academy and all the staff's personalities, 
We've already known that everyone in the school has a screw or two loose in their head, but we now finally get somewhat of an idea of what's going on. These fuckers don't have a screw loose, they have 20 screws loose and the only way a wrench is fixing them is twisting their necks in. The show tells us that the headmaster and teachers once betrayed, tortured, and murdered Olive Oil's mom, presumably due to the spellblade she once had now in his hands. Olive Oil didn't enroll in this academy to study, he came for revenge. To kill all the professors and headmasters and avenge his mother. With a simple 10 minute scene, we are not only demonstrated his insane battle capabilities with his future choosing spellblade, but also the fact that he has a whole ass organization backing him in this operation. Motherfucker didn't build an organization for fun, but for vengeance. This half of the episode essentially flips this show from a normal magic school life anime to a vengeance story. It changes the way we view the MC, how we view the school, how we view the world, especially that outside the school with this brutal backstory. And when you think about it, what Olive Oil is doing here kind of goes against not only everything he's told Nanao about valuing life and fighting for yourself, but also Nanao's values on fighting for honor. It makes you wonder what kind of conflicts will come in the future, not just between Olive Oil and the Academy, but even between him and his so-called friends. With the simple knowledge of his goals and the fact that this dark side of him exists, every scene onwards becomes so much more interesting with this double life kind of thing and looking back, some of his past actions start to make more sense too. Was him being nice actually him or just a way to bait the teacher into leading him into the labyrinth? Which side of him is the real him? Just the knowledge itself puts you so much more on edge than you should be and adds such a great and fascinating layer to an otherwise generic good guy MC. In just this half of the episode, your understanding of the world and plot of the entire anime essentially changes suddenly, flipping your view on it and introducing the true main plot, shattering any understanding you thought this generic anime was about. Now with all that being said, this anime is not perfect. Side characters are living, briefing NPCs. Some plot progression, especially the first few episodes, can feel like the run-of-the-mill fantasy plot. And I can't say the adventures of Peter Girl screaming idealistically is particularly engaging at first. Hearing this, you might ask, so how good is this anime? Honestly? I don't fucking know, but I think it's done by far enough to distinguish itself from the cesspool of generic fantasy anime, and at the very least deserves to have a name for itself. With its many, many traits and elements in this clusterfuck of a show, I find it difficult to sum this anime up as a good or bad show, so instead I'll just say this. I was very entertained. My neurons were most certainly activated the whole time. God I wish Harry Potter murdered in cold blood.